Okay, so my name's Dan Needham and this is Phil. Uh, we're going to talk about the Names Project today. I'm going to give an overview of the project and a brief update of where we are at. And Phil's going to talk about the work we've been doing specifically in the repository area. So the Names Project is um, a GIS-funded project and we're working with the British Library. And we're aiming to um, identify individuals and institutions within UK academia and also look at um, the feasibility of a name authority service. Um, and as part of that, we've been working on um, a software prototype. So um, regarding the software prototype, we wanted to um, initially build a central record store. And to do that, what we did was take a number of external data sources like um, RAE, Merit Data, um, ZTOT Data and others and try and disambiguate the unique individuals and institutions from within those data sources to build our own records that we could assign uh, unique identifiers. So to um, give a famous example, we've got Brian Cox here, and he might appear in all of those sources we saw before, but maybe referenced with a different name form. But we can see there's other information in there that we can use to help match them across those um, data sources, so things like fields of interest, institution, collaborative relationships, so we can use all that information and pull it together to form our own records. So once we built um, a central record store, we put an API on top of it, a RESTful API, which could be used to query um, the data in a number of different ways and bring it back in a number of different formats like JSON, RDF, Mark XML, and plain HTML. So in the next slide, we can see um, the HTML representation of Brian's um, names record. You can see in the top there is um, identifier is actually resolvable. Um, you can pull back that data in a number of different ways and you can filter what you actually pull back from within our system or you can pull back everything to do with him if you want to. So there's a number of different use cases that we see. We've got Brian using his identifier, for example, um, for making a paper submission. We've got um, external services on the right there using the API to pull the data out for whatever means they might want to. We've got another researcher searching names to find um, Brian's profile. And we've also uh, got libraries there using it for cataloging purposes. So our current record set is made up of 46,800 records that we've made permanent. Um, but we're also processing currently around 30 million records from a number of different sources like ZTOC and UKPMC and a few thousand more on the way from various institutional repositories. And the records we're um, making are we're making open. Um, access. Um, next steps, pull more data into our system to flesh out the existing records and create new records. Um, look at how we interoperate with other identifier providers like ISNI and ORCID. Get people using our identifiers and API and also look at how we can get authors taking ownership of the data, maybe providing information um, and managing it. So uh, thanks to Brian for being an unwitting participant in the presentation. Um, I'm now going to hand you over to Phil who's going to talk about the work we've been doing with repositories. Okay, well, thanks. So uh, I've been doing a bit of work with uh, repositories, which I'll talk about today. We've been working principally with the uh, ePrints software, but hopefully this will be extensible to other platforms. So I'm just going to talk about the ePrints plugin that we're working on and looking at how we can extract metadata from ePrints repositories and other ways in which you can give us metadata from your repositories if you wish. So the Plugin is an augmentation of the existing name auto-completion, which exists with ePrints, except it's not only searching the local database, but it's also searching our API, and therefore will automatically add the name's URI for that person to the database. Oh, there's Brian again, as you can see. So this is a screenshot. Um, I've typed in Cox into the family name field, and it's produced a drop-down, and you can see there's Brian highlighted, and you can see his official names URI uh, highlighted there. I've got a few screenshots, they all look a bit similar, but they are different slides. So one of the problems is disambiguating these different names. So you can see we've got multiple Roberts A there, how, how do we know which one's which? You mouse over and you can see on the right hand side um, disambiguation information. At the moment it's just a field of interest, but we're looking at adding extra information such as articles they've written, co-authors, maybe a a home page, so that allows you to select the correct one. So here's a different Robert A with different field of interest. We're sticking the names URI into the email field at the moment. That's essentially the ePrints creator ID. We're looking about whether we ought to perhaps be sticking into a different field in the database to avoid overwriting any local 
um, URIs. So, um, as fine, there's another ex similar screenshot. Uh, we will be demoing this outside. If you want to have a look, I've got the set up on the laptops. If you want to see this in action, um, come see me or Dan afterwards or later on today. Um, the other plugins that kind of suggest themselves um, in connection with this, so for instance, there may be a researcher who can't find themselves on name. In fact, there ought to be a button they can press to submit information about themselves from the repository to our API. Maybe you want to do some sort of global retrospective editing of existing names records to incorporate our, our URI. We're also looking at the wonderful ability that ePrints gives you for um, exporting a whole giant RDF graph of all the data in the repository, and we've written a module which imports that into um, names, so we can generate names, URIs on all your staff members. And in addition, if um, anybody we're looking at ways in which you can send us information about uh, researchers. So we're publishing um, a CSV format. You can send us data in a spreadsheet for us to generate uh, names, URIs. So that's it, I think. Um, just got our information up at the end there. As I say, we're around to talk to at all today. We're very interested in any, um, in talking to the, the repository community. If you have any ideas, any ways you think we can help you um, with your workflows, uh, come and chat to us look at our website or email us. Thank you.